think you're streaming. Oh, wait. An umpire and a vampire square off week after week, reviewing movies outside their own strike zone. This week's movies, the 1982 Creep Show and the 1996 Kingpin, starring Bill Murray, Leslie Nielsen, Adrian Barbeau, Vanessa Angel, Randy Quaid, Stephen King, and Nathan's Corpse. <laughs> now, now two guys who know better than to lift a meteor with their bare hands. Tim Crutchman and Jeff Miller. You got that right. We know better than season, that. Season four already. Oh my We're God. at season four. We are veterans now. Yeah, yeah. We're veterans. Hey, everybody. He's the ump. He's Jeff. He's a sports fan of the first order, and he's ready to take your order of merch anytime you want. Jeff, so glad to have you back this season. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, we were going to put somebody good in, but we decided to stick with you. And Tim, the one who's <laughs> doing all the yapping right now, he's the vamp. He uh, watches horror movies, loves them. And, uh, yeah, he, he's going to let you know anything. Well, no, because you do the sports movies and I do the I do movies. the sport. Yes. So, but but he likes You're new to the format, are no, you? No, so, so that's the whole catch. So, any, so if you haven't been here the three seasons before, let me just right. write it down. Yeah, right? do it. Okay, so... So here's what it is. So I like sports and sports movies, sports, sports, sports. I don't like horror movies. I don't ever really watch them. So I get to watch a sports movie every week. Lucky me. Tim, on the other hand, loves horror movies. Doesn't really particularly like sports or sports movies, but you do a little bit. And canary truck pulling, he likes that. But uh, he has to watch parakeets, sports. parakeets, what detractor I poles. Well, whatever. Yeah. I don't even know what I said. So listen. It's a so, thing. So, but Tim, Tim's it's a up thing. There with Tim is a thing, thing too. So Tim yeah. has to watch a sports movie and he loves them every week. Are you kidding me? Yep. Oh, hey, real quick shout I've out been me to lately. the Abominable Snow Races this weekend. My good oh. friend, my good friend Bill Wolf. I won't be doing it this weekend. Why not? Because my, I think because you're old. You can't no, do I these last things year. anymore. I just didn't feel like doing it this year. You can't do that but stuff. But Bill Wolf does a great job. It's going to be on Lake Geneva. It's going to be on Saturday. And it's okay. uh, it's it's four miles up and down the hills in the winter doing obstacles. It's a good time. A this time. weekend? Yeah. It's going to be like 10 degrees out. They have two spots left. You want to do it? No. <laughs> Under no circumstance. That's nightmare fuel for and me. And then the other thing is... All hail Muskego High School. Go Warriors. Yeah, one warrior. All right, let's go. It's awesome. What, did you now, say one warrior? Yeah, one warrior. Isn't that wow. what oh, you're supposed yeah, to be saying? Yeah. Creep Show is the that. movie I assigned to Jeff, and he absolutely loved. And then there's this thing. So here's the thing. Before you get into the, here's this thing about Kingpin. <laughs> You don't know if I love yeah. it or not. You have no idea. I do know. I, I, am I always cards, know. I pick high quality films. Jeff takes whatever he can because there's only about 10 sports movies left out there. Are you kidding of me? Of any value. You just wait. So. All right. Bring it on. So, <laughs> right. so no, Kingpin, though, is... I was going to bring it on. Oh, you done. all saw me. I was about to bring it on, and then I was pulled back by the Jeff Meister. All right, let's go. Wait, Are you sure? Yeah, we're going to talk about Kingpin first. We're going to talk about Kingpin first. One of the greatest bowling movies of all time. And that's like saying... <laughs> that's like saying... That's one of the greatest Italian war heroes of all time. There's like, what, one? Italian war hero? I don't even know. Yeah. It, it, it's just there isn't a lot there. No. They hung Mussolini. How, how many... Wait, let's, let's get into this. How many bowling... Movies are there. The Big Lebowski? <laughs> I don't know why well, that happened. We set off the echo, and it's now telling us where we can go bowling. Can, you, can, we, can we turn that off? Alexa, stop. Monster. Okay, so no. So stop teasing my devices. That's what she said. Anyways. Oh, hold that, hold that. There it is. Okay. It didn't take long. That's what she said also. <laughs> That's what she proclaimed oh, profusely. See, I said that one time, but I never remember that. I know. 
That's why it's funny every time it comes. So, up. but hey, another thing is, so you have the Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski, which bowling. is not a bowling movie; it's a crime movie with a single scene of bowling. There's a few scenes with Jesus in there. Okay, maybe three scenes. And then, and then Grease Two has bowling in it. Again, three then, scenes. But here's Fright Night Two has uh, as yeah, much I, bowling in it as Grease Two. Yeah, but what about the, the movie? Why would you ever brag about the? Grease too, by the way. Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay, that's <laughs> she's solid. So and it, yes, and then but in the last bowling movie that I can tell you about, <laughs> well, that, she's solid. <laughs> oh yeah, well that's what he would say. Yeah, right. Profusely, without right. hesitation. Correct. Wait, that's not right. She would say Correct. it's whatever. Anyways, um, going on. So back to the last the one of the best bowling movies ever, and I don't think you'll ever find it for me to watch it, but it's called Dreamer. Dreamer. It's a really, it's probably a night, like early 80s, like 80, 81, 82. That's a really, it's all about bowling. It's really? Movie. Yeah. If you can well, it has to be better out. than this thing. Here we go. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> but it took place in Pittsburgh. I mean, they shot in Pittsburgh, so it's got to be. You know, and and uh, that's wonderful. There was a scene where, um, actually both of the movies that we're watching tonight were shot in and around Pittsburgh. Yep. There is a scene in Creep Show where you can really tell it's in Pittsburgh yeah. because they pull up to a house and it yep. yeah, it is yeah. way to heck. Of a and you know what? Hell. If we had gone to Pittsburgh, I never would have known that. But yes, yeah, yeah I was yeah. sitting there and I'm going, "Woo, that's up there some waves, ain't it?" All right, I saw the movie Kingpin. Yes. It was uh, released in 1996. It is about as typical a sports movie as you're going to get, which I think was the plan to make kind of a spoof of sports movies in general. No. Because and they did it on a sport that isn't, you know, some people would say not a sport, it's a game. It's kind of on that line. You know, and they, kind of like uh bags. You know, in the in the summer yeah. when people are yeah, playing yeah, bags, yeah. some people think that's a sport. I don't, but some people are are like that. Is NASCAR on the line? I, I'm I'm contractually saying. obligated not to speak about NASCAR. Oh shoot, that's right. No, I, I no, I'm kidding. Anyways, I right, I ahead. think it I think it is, I think it is NASCAR because skiing is definitely a sport right and they've got all sorts of equipment that they're dealing with um seriously yeah uh, here we go uh but, uh there i guess I, I don't know well actually bowling to me lines up very closely with what i'm going to be watching a lot of in the next month and that's curling I like curling. Uh, no, I, like I, curling. I love curling. I think it's great. Uh, but I need the commentators because I don't know what the hell you I'm watching. What? Guys like you and but, me could probably still qualify for a curling team, you know? I, I would I would absolutely be terrible at it. I don't think so. I would be terrible at it. I would love it. I'll tell you why. Why? Because anytime I slide anything across uh, a table or anything, I can never get it to stop where I want to. It is going skating. It, it is going a hundred miles. Past why don't you just? Why don't you just be the guy sweeping then? <laughs> I think we all know the reason by that. That actually requires some physical ability. All right. I wouldn't be able to do it. But yeah. So anyway, this is it, it's it's a very typical storyline. It's a guy that was a promising prospect for his sport. Yep. He he blows it. And he, he uh, gets injured badly by oh. a um, by a rival. He falls into, in this case, alcohol abuse. Usually, we like to have steroid abuse in our in our sports movies. This time, they decided to do the alcohol abuse. So, just putting a little spin on the ball, discovers a. Younger. Why would you put that up there, Lynn Shea? Yes. There's why? a reason. There's a reason. I hate that. I, I know. I hate that. Go ahead. I know I'm there sorry. is a reason. Uh, but um, yeah. I tries to live vicariously through the younger soul. You know, like 
like uh, we have coming up later in this season, we have the color of money. It reminds me a awesome. lot Can't wait. of the color of money. It does. Um, this this movie, yeah, the structure we, of it. We will. We will. The talk structure about, of it we'll is talk about almost a photocopy. Yeah. Um, but I uh, this movie. <sighs> Here's the thing: it's got two jokes. It's got two jokes. Okay. It uses them over and over and over again. The two jokes is Woody Harrelson loses his hand early on. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, but you're an idiot if you don't know that. <laughs> um, it's just what it is. And he's got either a hook or a rubber hand throughout the rest of the movie. That is the joke. The joke is the man he has a prosthetic. And they do goofy things with it, but that's the joke. The other joke is Randy Quaid. Being Amish. Is, yeah, Mennonite or Amish. Yeah, Amish. Um, and, oh, he's never seen any of this stuff, except for with all the uh, documentaries out there about the Amish, they're not quite as clueless as we all thought okay. uh, back when this movie came out. Um. <sighs> Those are the two jokes, and it, it's kind of like a lot of things. Like this show, we were funny at first, but it's just gone on too long. <laughs> just, I, you know, by the end of the movie, I'm kind of like, okay, Bill Murray is the only uh, breath of fresh air in the thing, and I think without Bill Murray, this this movie wouldn't be watched. Did you know that Randy Quaid convinced Bill Murray to do this this? I did not know that. He did. He convinced him to do it. This was not on Bill Murray's radar at all. Randy Quaid said, hey, you got to do this. Talk to him. Talk to him and do it. And then you have what you have. They they had a very different cast. I, yeah. I had heard that Woody Harrelson's role, they were looking seriously at Michael Keaton, which I think would have been a much better yeah. uh, there. And Randy Quaid, they were looking at Chris Farley, which would have been phenomenal. Um, yeah. Jim Carrey was oh. looked at for Bill Murray's. That, would, that been, would not have worked. Oh my god. Oh. That would not have worked. I hope I have no Bill Murray. I hope I have no Jim Carrey movies. Yeah, I well, I I like Jim Carrey. No. He would not have worked in this film no. at all. Um but anyway, the Did you hear that the main the I'm sorry, uh, Vanessa Angel as Claudia? Yeah. That was originally cast uh for Betty White. No, it was not. Okay. She's an angel now. No, go ahead. <laughs> it wasn't. I, it was just a joke. Yeah. Now, did you know that? Okay, oh, yeah. I, that, that I've got. Over, that went over like a lead balloon. Yes, it, it sure did. Like a lead zeppelin. Yeah, you know, one thing I got to ask you, they make a lot about him winning a ring yeah. for for bowling. Should you be wearing a ring when you're bowling? <laughs> Not on the hand that you're. That doesn't <laughs> seem like a good idea. Not on the hand that you're rolling the ball with. That doesn't. Now, one thing I I really enjoyed, they have a uh, um, a degenerate gambler uh, in one scene played by Chris Elliott. That's yep. him right there. I uh, a lot of people know him now from the TV show Shit's Creek. He's fantastic in that show as the mayor. Uh, but his scene is very funny. I I admit that, and it makes fun of another movie that Woody Harrelson was in called Indecent Proposal. Oh, sure, yeah. So uh, I thought that made a lot of... That that really landed for me. I also, during the bowling scene at the end, one thing that hit my funny bone that I don't think... I don't think you're familiar with this movie. But... I guess Will Ferrell did quite a bit of the yelling out of um, oh, cat really? calls and stuff. Really? He just did it, you know, because he did it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that you hear, because I knew that, I was listening for his voice. Really? But I don't think this was Will Ferrell, but somebody yelled out, Attaboy Luther. And I just about lost it. You, Yeah, oh, I didn't yeah. think you would know this. Attaboy Luther is something that is yelled at Don Knotts in the movie The Ghost and Mr. Kit, um, Chicken. 
every time he comes out and he says something to a group of people, somebody goes, Attaboy, Luther! And it happens every time he goes out. Oh, and really? it's just, it's it's funny because so stupid, because Don Knotts, you know that character yeah, of Don yeah. Knotts. Yeah, yeah. He's like, well, he's doing a terrible job. And somebody goes, Attaboy, Luther! Wow, that's a deep cut. But yeah, yeah and I, I heard that and it just cracked me up. You knew that was coming or when you heard it, you're like, Wow. Uh, when I heard it, okay. I went, you got to be kidding me. That's awesome. <laughs> I was listening for Will Ferrell to say stuff. And he did. I, I did recognize his voice a few times. But his were more like, you can do it and, you know, stuff like that. It, it wasn't really super, you know, yeah. uh, creative. But you could tell it was his voice once you're listening for it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, Attaboy Luther was kind of the Wilhelm ah! screen of the... Yeah, see, you caught me off guard. the first one of the year. I'm like, what the hell is that I love it. I love it. Hey, you know what time it is? No. It's our oh, movie connection time. Shoot. Oh, I forgot to do this. No, you don't worry about that. No, I forgot this to do This is my it. thing. But on my end, I did. This is my thing. All right. Horror movie connection. So... You were all upset about the picture that I had up in the corner. Yeah, nasty. About Lynn Shea is the name of that actress. Yeah, that's nasty. Okay. She is related to the head of New Line Cinema that released this movie. Lynn Shea has been used for more horror movies because New Line Cinema has uh, been releasing uh, horror movies Forever, including uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, which yeah. we were discussing earlier. Uh, Lin Shay, the landlord, has been in all of the Insidious films, and there's been at least three, maybe four of those. She's been in the Ouija films, um, Ouija board Ugh. films. There's two of those. She was in the movie Big Ass Spider. She was in the movie oh The God. Grudge, 2001 oh, no. Maniacs. She was in Nightmare on Elm Street. She was in both Critters 1 and 2. I remember what her in she, Critters 2. What the hell? And she was in The Hidden. Because, well, she knows the head of a studio. Oh. Is, is I think, her brother or, or like, uncle or something. But I think it's her brother is, is the head of New Line Studios. So they, they keep offering her up. And she actually is. A good actress. I mean, you're not going to fall in love with her, but she, you know, she isn't like the hot chick, the ingenue or anything, but she's a very good actress, so she keeps getting these jobs. Did you see her on Boat Cruise? Boat with, Cruise. Yeah, with Cuba Gooding Jr. No, and, I have not there. seen that movie. Oh, you got to see that. Really? Yeah. On purpose? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Anyways, but yeah. she is she is in there, yep. She plays... Pretty much the same thing as she plays as the landlord in this one. She plays that kind of a role. Oh, yeah. And it is a foul, foul. Yeah, she... she had foul, funny you used the word foul because she uses a baseball bat in Bullet Cruise. We'll just leave it at that. I don't want to know where she stuck it. Um, I'm not even the, kidding around. I'm not even trying to make a joke. I, you didn't. It's, 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 it's scary. Oh. Well, it's actually scary. It could be a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, now, this movie was made by the Fairley Brothers, and I actually looked up when they made this yeah. movie, and this was fairly early on in their <laughs> in their filmdom. For the Fairleys? Um, yeah, for the Fairleys. <laughs> right after this is when they made their Something About Mary, and that was their big breakthrough. Here, okay. She was, was in right that, too, I think. That. I believe yep, she she's was. she's the mom. Yep. But she, that's, she's totally... Yeah. Like burnt suntan. Right, right. Yeah, she's like leather. leather. Yeah. yeah. Leather face. Um, but they've made a number of comedies. And most recently, Peter Fairley of the Fairley Brothers, he made Green Book, which got Oscar nominations. So they've, they've come a long way from dumb, gross-out humor. Uh, but we're not done with horror movie connections because Woody Harrelson. <laughs> I know what he's in. Go ahead. Natural Born Killers. Natural Born Killers and two Zombieland movies. Yes, Zombieland. Yes, I love Zombieland movies. Which, having said that, we know that Bill Murray was also yes, he in was. the Zombieland. He was a number movie. one. You bet. Yeah. 
And in two. Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember. I know yep. that he was in it, but I'm trying to remember what he does in the second one. I'm not telling you. Cause... Spoiler alert. Okay. Yeah, uh, Zombieland. If you get a chance now, to see Zombieland, go see it. Yeah, the first Zombieland is really solid. Yes. Uh, as a rock. Bill Murray was also in Little Shop of Horrors and steals the scene that he's in Little Shop of Horrors. Um, no. Oh, wow. That, that's going to get added. Um, and... He was in the movie The Dead Don't Die, which I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a huge Bill Murray fan. I wanted to kill myself after watching that thing. It was so bad. It was aggressively bad. So do not see The Dead Don't Die. You will hurt for days afterwards. Now, Randy Quaid has also been in horror movies. Did you know that? Trying to think real quick here. I, I'm going to say, no, I didn't know that. But as soon as you tell me, let that, me I'd say I do know that. Let me check if my brother is in the chat room. He knows one of them. He's not in there. No. Oh, look at all those people. Look at that. It's very busy. Well, I want to thank everybody that's in their chat room. But Six they, one of them that um, that Randy Quaid was in is Frankenstein, 1992. He played Wait. the monster. Wait a second. Is that the one with Robert De Niro? No. Oh, it is not. See. It's the one with uh, Patrick that, Bergen that plays Frankenstein in that one. Uh, the Dr. Frankenstein. Oh, it okay. was uh, done for TBS. It was like a two-night miniseries type thing. Oh. But it was, it, my brother has read Frankenstein, the book, and he thinks that's the closest they've come to capturing the book. Really? Uh, yeah, he. it is a very good version, and okay. it is impossible to find. And when I'm saying that, that means it is tough to find that thing. Uh, he was also in a little-known, um, well, I don't know, it's kind of known, a Charlie Sheen vehicle called The Wraith uh, nope. back in the 80s. It's kind of like a ghost in a car type thing. And he was in a really good dark comedy called Parents. Nope. Um, and that was that was before he ran off to Canada. So that's uh, Randy Quaid in the horror movie connection. All right. I think it's time for me to give a grade. Um, actually, remember, we give a number grade. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well... You got to do it. You can't go off the here's, here's where I am. When you said a grade. I kind of had an yeah. idea. Yeah. Here's here's where I am with Wait, this. do you want to wait till I give mine and then you give the... No. Give the, okay. we, we do it now and then uh -huh. we come back later. People can start betting the moment because the sports book on our show is pretty s successful the in Vegas. Is just yeah. People phenomenal. are making a lot of things. I know what you're going to give this. I, I already... I already okay. Gave what am I going to give it? You're, you I already you got my finger on you the You don't button. sound that enthusiastic about it. I'm not. Um, you, which, you read between which the I lines. Think, I think you're it wrong. doesn't make me laugh enough. Really? It doesn't make Wait, me but, laugh. Uh, sports movies not supposed to make you laugh. This is a comedy that involves <laughs> sports. <laughs> you're, you're probably going to... Hey, I've enjoyed a lot, of, a lot of the highest graded ones that I've given for the Look show here. for sports... Has been comedies, Caddyshack and Dodgeball come to mind right off the top. That I gave right. very high scores. I'm gonna for. say that you're gonna give this something. You're gonna be like a, like a five. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I I yeah. really I aggressively don't like this. Aggressively. Film. I aggressively I, did you don't like it. You learned a new like word it. this week because you've used that a lot now. I. That's because when you come in here, you're rather <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> I get yelled at for not having ice in the freezer. Who doesn't have ice in their I, house? It's Wisconsin. If you wanted fucking ice, you could go outside whoa, whoa. and just grab the snowbank. Whoa. whoa. He makes a big freaking deal. <laughs> Hey, make sure you close the shade. I'm kind of scared. Somebody might look in the window. Okay. It's pretty okay. close. Okay. I, I think I nailed it's not, that look, impression. Look over my shoulder here. Is that closed? No. I don't ask it's closed. I don't ask for much. What? I, what's going to come in there? I ask what's for, crawling in and scaring Jeff for tonight? For four seasons, I've asked for just ice uh, oh and my a closed God. window. That's, That's all it. you've asked for. I don't ask for anything. That is all you've oh asked for. Oh, my God. I ask for nothing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, like, legit ratings. I mean, come on. 
That a was three. a legit meeting. I, I, I have oh. always not liked this movie. I, I watched it and I'm like, I must be missing something. People always talk about Should... this movie. I, I must be missing it because I, I haven't enjoyed it in the past. And I'm watching it and I'm going, I, re I remember why. Actually, the reason it's a three and not a two is Bill Murray pulls it pretty far at the end. Doesn't Vanessa yeah, do anything? Too. Helps it along. Well, she's hot. You know what I just realized? I'm looking at the, the cover right there. That's her legs they're looking through. I you didn't. didn't you... No, I thought they were looking through, like, you know, where the ball comes up through the, the shoe. Well, that's where they want to put her balls, yeah. Okay, see, I didn't even go there. Okay. But now if you look at it, look at the pin and the two bullets. Wow. I think they, I think they want to pin her. I didn't even. Wow, there's some subliminal wow, stuff. Wow, that's not subliminal. That, that. Everybody else that on. looks at that poster the, immediately figures out it's her legs. Do you figure out that the ball, the ball, and the pins? That's supposed to be yeah. Tim, I've seen yeah. this for since 1996, and this is the first time I really realized that. Well, that's surprising because he came into this room and immediately saw the thing I hid for you. So you hid, yeah, the poster. Well, yeah, well, that's there, but that's like subliminal. You gotta be like that's a not savant subliminal. to see that shit. No, no. Stuff. All right, it is that time in the show that everybody waits for. You know what it is, Jeff? I don't know. I love merch madness. <laughs> that's right. It's merch madness time here on that's the show, uh, and that's our new spokesperson. Yep, that's our new. Spokesmile, we uh, paid top dollar to to get her to do that, was, that endorsement. That was out at at a com or not Comic Con Horror Con <laughs> Horror Realm Horror Realm Horror Realm. You you <laughs> you pushed this thing like crazy, and he forgot. That's Horror awesome. Realm. It's Horror Realm. It's coming up again. We'll probably talk about. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. March fourth through the sixth. Wait, at the no, Crown you, Plaza. You mispronounced that. Horror Realm. No, March fourth to the sixth. March fourth. <laughs> <laughs> you're right you're right anyways you're right go ahead merch yeah only 35 days oh my god okay. we gotta get planning buddy yeah we gotta get planning yeah hey if we're gonna get into jeepy jeep yep that's jeepy right. jeep. and jeep is awesome you tell me that all the time i gotta put a fender on it but go ahead anyways, okay okay so we talked about horror realm horror realm's coming up they got some great guests coming up amanda burst uh, tai Chi, no, what's her name? Bai Ling. Bai, Bai Ling is going to be there. Tai Chi. <laughs> Bai Ling is going to be there. Oh, my God. Kane Hodder. There's going to be... William uh, Ragsdale, Stephen Jeffries. You have people. Jonathan Stark. You, there's going to be uh, David Naughton, the star of American Werewolf in London, is going to be there. Yeah, Can you believe yeah, that? I, yeah. So a lot of great I, folks coming out to Horror Realm in Pittsburgh, March 4th through the 6th. And last but not least, March. the... Oh. The Jeff Miller yeah, will be there, and he might have something that looks a little bit like this. I was told some of our older ads were a little bit too long. So. I like, but I like that. That's good. That, that was that was classy. You right? know what? It's short and to the point. Yes. That's what and you I think every. Profusely. I don't have the button on this one. Here you, you just get the. Short to the point. Is awesome. I, really, I see over there right now. Uh oh. Negative you're not three. supposed to like see that. that. You can't put a negative yeah, three. You're not supposed to see that. Yet. Well, I see everything except for Kingpin. Oh, uh, by the way, in in the chat room, oh, hold on, I get. I don't have mice at my house either. Yes, Oof. that's right. Let me get rid of that. See that? No, damn it! Wow. No ice at her house. Well, I guess the apple. Yeah, but fall you know far from the that is my there. mother. She's a cold, cold person. I guess so. that's bad. <laughs> so, but that's not even true at all. No, it's. Not. It's just the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Let's what? 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 Well, she's the tree, and you're the apple, and uh, she doesn't have ice, and you don't have ice. Yeah. All right. Hey, you oh, know wait, what? Wait, let me ask you. Let me ask you that one quick question. Okay. If you knew that I needed ice, needed ice, or I needed a shade shot, I'm sure that does, would be the does case. Does anybody ever really need anything? Yeah, 
Yes. Does anybody know what time it is? No. Yeah, it's time for hey, me to start anybody talking about Anybody really movies. care? Yes. Here we go. It's Jeff time. <laughs> it's always Jeff time. <laughs> <laughs> From the moment he bursts into my house. This is the movie Creep Show oh that you God. are lucky enough to get to lucky see. Lucky enough? Okay, so here's the deal. First of all, props to Pittsburgh. Hold on, everybody. You can yes. contact Jeff at Jeff at otherworldlyculture.com. Yep. If he says something mean about Creep Show, that's where you will send your hate mail. Okay. But anyways, first before that, if you send me something, I'll send you something. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Now, here's the other thing. Now, see, you covered me up. Can you take that down for a second? It comes down automatically. Okay, there you go. Pittsburgh. So this is a little entomage. No, what is it? Uh, um, homage. 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 It's an homage. There you go. It's homage to both the movies we have this week. We have Our one Pittsburgh. from Pen, Yeah. And which comes up in the trivia, but I'm not going to give you that away yet. And then this one right here, because Ted Savini, or no, Tom. What is it? Is it Tom or Ted? It's something with a T. Just tell me because Tim. it's not on there. It's it's Tim Savini. Oh, sorry, Tim. So it's not even. No, Tim. it's not. It's Tim Savini. Well, don't come on, man. <laughs> when I meet him again, when I meet him next time, he's gonna want me to say hello to him correctly. He's probably gonna want something signed. Probably. <laughs> anyways, back to back to Jeff. No. Anyways, so back Tom to Savini. Jeff. Tom Savini's from Pittsburgh. I met him last yeah. year. You know, hey. We're, kind of by mistake. Well, we're probably gonna do. We probably will do drinks this next time. But anyways, so I met him out there in Pittsburgh. So yeah. this is to Tom, right here, bud, and then to uh, the people, the Fairley brothers or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I. That that is a neat thing that we didn't really plan that part of it. We I, we kind of paired. Oh, whatever. I did. Yeah. Okay. I'm a savant like that. Yeah. You're I'm, a savant. I'm a, I'm a. We're all agreed with the savant part. Okay. One more time, then I'll. Is it Tom, Tim, or Ted? Tom? It's Tom. Okay. So Tom Savini, is he does the the special effects in this movie. He does all the makeup effects, yes. Yeah, but he kind of worked on something, too. He worked on an animatronic thing. And yes, he, he did the some, animatronics. He had to ask some help on that. Yeah, from Rob Botin that did right. all the effects in no, the thing. No relation to Rob Zombie. So right. anyway, so back to the show. So Creep, Creep Show, I have no idea what this is about. I've never seen it. 1982, so I'm thinking, okay, how old was I then? Where I wasn't seen this, probably not. Um, but it's about, it's about, and I'm not going to give away any spoilers because I think people should still see this. Yeah. But I will walk you through this. It's an anthology film, which I saw Trick or Treat. I liked it. I've seen Cat's Eye. I like it. So I, it's an anthology film, so I know what I'm in for. Right. It's got this. You this, really like Trick or Treat. I was surprised I how much you liked that's that That's going to be, you know what, that's actually going to be a Halloween season movie that I'm going to watch. All right. I watch the movie Long Gone, the baseball movie. Every every opening day, I watch that. Right oh, you now. watch it on opening day? I was going to ask you I when it is. I do. Because... Either the day before, the day of, or the day after, right in there, depending on when it is. I watch that. And then for Halloween, I am going to watch Trick or Treat because I really did enjoy it. I did. Yeah. But let's get back to this. So this is an anthology. It has to do with a comic called Creepshow. Now, is that a real comic book? Okay. There's a little bit of a story behind that. This is kind of based on EC type horror. What's um, EC mean? EC. East Coast. I don't know what EC stood for, like extra creepy or something, but that that was kind of like DC comics. There was oh, EC okay. comics. All right, all right. And they made Tales from the Crypt, okay. which you've so what, heard of okay, before. Okay, I got something to say. Yep. Um, well, I know you've got something to say. You did warn us. Uh, but they. They made a lot of really creepy comic books, and this was kind of based upon <laughs> that type of comic book. And in fact, I I took little. If you see over in the corner, yeah, I see I, I took some of my comic books, and there's the baseball yeah, cards because I knew you'd like that. Yep. Well, and I just mean, took some I mean, pages at random and took pictures of them. Thank you, Tim. You put there. a lot of effort into all this. That's great. I, I did try. I tried. Now, wait. Here comes the nightmare fuel, I think. No, not that one. It's coming up. Isn't that scary? Ooh. Okay, anyways. So, so, back, so frightening. Back, back to the anthology. So how this opens up is... But it's very much like one of these. This is one of my comic books. Stranger th or Creepy Things. This was... My favorite with modern comics. How how much did it say I paid for 35 that? Thirty five cents. Thirty five cents. You know how much comic books go for now? They're like five bucks a piece. So now, did you actually like read those? 
Oh yeah, I the ones that I have really? right here, I've read probably seventy times. Really, you read when through, I was a kid. You read through them. My why? My mom was very big on buy the kid comic books because it's reading. It doesn't matter what it is, get them reading. And this one in particular, this is my Boris Karloff um, one. This one I've read probably a hundred times, and I'm not really kidding. Now, don't get and it does have, by the way, a great Sea Monkeys ad on the back, <laughs> which which is Brian Shrimp. Well, but, but if you read that, like if you read it, I a wanted times, to, why would you read it again? I'll, I'll tell you why. This the last story in this particular Boris Carla. All right. I very much wanted to make a movie based on it. And I, I tried writing a script. I, I just couldn't expand it out enough. But uh, I really thought it was a great idea. Now I look at it and I go, yeah, it would be impossible to do as a movie because it's based on one one linchpin thing that works in writing but would never work in um, moviedom. But, and I'm not going to give it away because someday I may figure it out. But um, I really loved it. That particular book. And I believe my love of horror m- movies in general is very much goes back to the okay. to the comic book. So this is an important movie to me. Ooh. All right. Well, back to and, me. And here comes and, the three. Yeah. No. So here's the deal. No, here, here's how it goes. Now let's get let's get back to this. There's yeah. five stories in here, okay? Yes. So there are. that's that's pretty cool because you know you're not gonna spend a whole lot of time in each one. You're gonna get to the point and be done. So, but what I noticed, Tim, yes, is that now we're not count. We're not going to count the bookends. We're not counting those. But all the interior ones, yeah, they got longer as they went along. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there you and go. They became more developed. Yes. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So the first one about hey, where's my cake? You know, this is about a guy who was killed, and he's like, where's my cake? And then he comes back alive, and then cake and all that happens. But you know what? It's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm like. I can kind of hang with this, but then... It's a, it's a zombie story. Yeah, but zombies now are better. Yes, they are. That was kind of... That's, I mean, I get... By, it was... But that's the whole it's thing. It's a great zombie makeup, okay. because if you don't say that, your friend Tom is going to beat you up when you're Whatever. in Pittsburgh. I, he's like four foot 11. I'm not worried about that. So anyways, back to this. So, okay, so in 82, would you say that... Would you say... What was done in there was state of the art. Do you would you say that was I the think, top line? Right I there? I think that was a pretty damn good zombie makeup. Okay. He he did good throughout this. I actually think this one and um, Don't give it away. Dawn of the Dead are oh. probably his two best um, makeup movies. That that's my oh. opinion. He's done a lot of great makeup over the years, but I think those are the two okay. top. So, so this was the first one. So the first one, basically, this is what it was. A woman kills her dad on Father's Day. She mourns him, and he comes back as a zombie. I'll leave it at that, right? Is right. that good enough? I mean, yeah. just moving forward through the next four. Yeah, you I don't can't give spoil them because all of Did these, just that? like. Did I spoil that one? No. No, okay. But just like in the comic books, they always have twist endings. Right. They, every single one. So the next one is Stephen King. Yes. All right, Stephen King actually did some work on this, other than just acting. And he did so; he wrote some of this or something. But no, 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 he wrote the entire script. Oh. Stephen King wrote the entire creep show mm. script. Okay. Well, all right. I was gonna try to. Mm, all right. Anyway, so back to this. Uh oh, I ruined his old way yeah. he was gonna so talk back, about. It. No, back to this. So he's yeah. in this one about the death of somebody, and the lonely death of. Jason St- Boris. No, something. what was it? It was Gerald something. Yeah, but it was ca- so yeah. his so his thing. So I did a little research on this, and I know I never do research, but I did a little research. They uh-huh. they wanted him or he wanted him to act like Wiley Coyote. So when you see yes. his expressions, it's it's over cool. the top. It's yeah, over he's the top. he's chewing up the scenery. Yeah, he is. Say. But yeah. you know what? Okay, so that one's that. He, he okay. Yeah. So what happens? He sees a meteor. He plays with it. And then the rest of the movie. So I'll let that one go where it is. All right. <laughs> okay. So now the next one. The next one's got. Leslie. I love these descriptions. This is totally. Well, I, don't give, I don't give stuff away. I know it's hard to talk about this movie because they're short little segments, and if you go too far describing any one of them, it could just. So, so now the next one 
is something about the tide. It was called the tide becomes you one one to tide you over. I yes. think is what it's so called. So what it is is Leslie Nielsen goes and like knocks on Ted Danson, Sam Malone from Cheers, sports yeah. reference. So he go, oh, look at that. I did that without even knowing what I did. Oh, yeah. and Leslie Nielsen was in. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Where is it? <laughs> okay, Ted Danson from Cheers. Yeah, he was a pitcher, and yeah. then Leslie Nielsen. He's actually in. Um, naked Gun, and he plays that umpire in that. All right. Yes. So much like yourself, but you want to be called champ this season, right? No. Oh, I was a champ last year. I get that. So, anyways, because I'll go halfway with you. Oh, All right. Yeah. No. All right. So, anyways, yeah. he saw it coming. That's See, he saw it coming. Yeah. So, so in that one, so Leslie Nielsen goes over to Danson's house. He's like, "Hey, man, you got to come with me." They go to the beach. They bury Ted Danson in the sand. I can that's not giving anything away. Right. And it turns out it bur- he buries a woman in the sand too. And after I figured this out a little bit, this so this was a little strange. I kind of tied this to to um cat's eye. It's kind of like cat's eye in a way where Leslie Nielsen makes the lover of his wife do something to to like to, yes. Like strenuous. Okay, so yes. that's that. So, but he buries him in there, and their heads are there, or whatever. And then something happens, and then Leslie Nielsen can hold his breath. We'll just put it that. Yeah, this this particular segment is based on the short story that Stephen King oh, wrote. Oh, Stephen King that did that got, too. God yes, damn, I'm that on a guy, roll. It got um, directly um, adapted for Cat's Eye. But in this movie, he changed it a little bit to make it this. So, now, people say, oh, yeah, I was taking his uh, his other idea. But literally, I only got about 10 comic books here total. I bet you I, it would take me less than a minute to find where there was a revenge story about a lover and, and the guy's wife. I mean, it, it literally is in every tenth book of horror. There will be a story like that. And I, I honestly, that's probably my second favorite of the segments. I really like. I'll that tell you. Segment. I'll tell you my order when I'm done. Okay. Yeah. What I didn't like about this, I didn't. Okay, so I gotta put myself in '82. But there was colored TVs back then. I didn't like the. Fact oh, that they, it, it, I didn't like the, the black and white TV. I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't like that. That was kind of. And his VHS collection yeah. is for shit. I, of, well, come on, he's a rich guy, and he had 20 VHS tapes. Yeah, I'm like, kind, come on. Kind of dumb, but but this was. But I, I had that. I wasn't even out of high school yet. Are you kind of impressed that I picked up on the cat's eye thing? I'm very impressed. Yeah, see, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, All right, so, an IMDb trivia, but. Uh, no, I kind of picked it up. So the next thing, give me a little credit, dude. All right, so, so the next one, the next one it's was. so easy to get them going. Wait, the roach one, but there's one between there and there. That's, yeah, oh, the, the next crate. one is with Fluffy. Yeah, the there crate. Go, Fluffy. Yes. Now, that one, I picked up some stuff on that, too. It was so cool. Because because of Tim, and the fact that I do this, I picked up on stuff on these movies that I wouldn't have picked up otherwise. Okay. So there's crate that's underneath these stairs. But well, first of all, there's this guy, and his his name is Henry Northrup. Okay, yes, that's Hal Holbrook. Yep. He he's married to Adrian Barbeau, who's also in the Swamp Thing. And mm-hmm. Adrian Bar- Barbeau is pleasant to look at. She is, but she's a real. I'm gonna just say it. She's a real witch in this movie. She's very terrible towards Hal because there's an age difference, right? So, so anyways. <laughs> I uh, actually she's a witch. I she, when you talk about sexual on. prowess in the bed yeah. and he can't do stuff. Mm. Let, let, let me tell you. In the comic book adaption of Creep Show, I when I was a kid, I came across the comic book adaption of Creep Show. I do not know, I don't think I ever owned it. I must have got it from the library or something, but it was well before I was ever allowed to see this movie. Okay. All right. Okay. It was probably another five, six years before I saw the movie. But they had the the creep would come in and he would kind of narrate from time to time. And they had a sequence where Adrian Barbeau was just being a total witch pain to her husband. And he comes in 
the creeper, he says, give me a B, give me an I, give me a T. Oh, you know the rest. And to this day, I remember that particular frame because I was like, oh, they used bitch. Oh, my God, they were referring to bitch. I I just thought it was fantastic. I I loved it. But uh, she really, I mean, it's over the top. Yeah, it is. That that is some over the top acting. But actually, you know, there's a couple scenes where you can kind of tell that at one point they were in love. You you kind of see where there's a motive behind it that she's she just likes to gossip and be yeah. married yeah, yeah. Billy, to this powerful professor, but but he's totally powerless against her. There's a sports movie connection in there. Why don't you give me that sports movie connection? I get it, sorry. Adrian Barber yeah. was in Cannonball Run, which is oh, a yeah. sports movie about racing across the United States. That that's a good. Oh, I, I I love that movie. Thank you. So anyways, and Adrian Barbeau was actually married to John Carpenter. Yep, I was getting to right. that. I was getting to that. Go ahead. Because you'll see you'll see why. Go ahead. Because according to Tim, he had me watch the thing, which is a movie that I enjoyed. And then as soon as I saw that the crate was Antarctica, that's the first thing I thought of. The first thing I thought of was the thing, and then because he's John Carpenter, and I know a little bit about Adrian Barbeau. I'm like. Holy balls. I'm like, they were married, so this is all tying like a little Yes. Mess. But yeah. then I got to say, I got to say something about this. Who, okay, Tim, you're the janitor. You're cracking open this crate, and you hear something. Nah, 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 nah. You hear that in there. So, you know what? Let me just stick my hand in there. Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? I hear, nah, 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 Okay, nah. the thing was like, though, from the no. 1800s I don't care. or whatever. If you hear a noise. There, you're... there shouldn't be anything living in there. But you heard it. You heard it. He he, he so heard it and he felt in? something moving. Right? Him, why right? would you yeah. stick your hand? In? That was that. I was pissed. I'm like, you you know, what? you deserve to die, and I didn't give anything away. You deserve to die. So, anyways, so let okay, so that's he okay. But when we, we went to see Scream, okay, Ooh, when we went oh, to yeah, see Scream, Scream in the theater, he's sitting oh, there and he's mad at me when I'm saying stab her, stab her, and, and he's like. Oh, that isn't nice. But meanwhile, he's taking the help and throwing it inside a crate with a monster. If he wouldn't have... St- Come on. Why this would is he- how why? you are. Why would you stick your hand in there? Why? <laughs> why? That was dumb. That's so what Stephen you King, said. Stephen- <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's, probably, that's the best one in season four. That's awesome. That's, that, let's, let's, just re- like, this is, let's recap. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's why would he st- <laughs> that? You know what? That's gonna be a tough one to. to oh, top. why God. would he stick his hand in there? Oh, you that kept saying it said. too. That I was know. the best part. That's fantastic. But uh, <laughs> but anyways, so so as, as Tim comes down from his high, um, so Hal is this professor, and he's like, you know what? Oh, I gotta get rid of this this wife of mine. So he calls her down to the. To the lab, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, so that's it. So I, I'm not going to give you any more, but that's that one's all right. And then the last one, the last one's about all these cockroaches, and it's like you know I don't I don't have a bug problem. cockroach cockroach yeah. a cockroach yeah cockroach. Um, I don't have a problem with bugs. I really don't. So it's it's not like that weird. Even that one on your shoulder. <laughs> Anyways, but but he had a, actually with all the drug abuse in your sports movies, they're always seeing stuff on him. Did Did you notice that he had a mask on? He had to dispose of his mask. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he had like a little vacuum yeah. cleaner built right into his. But chest. I know. But I knew. I knew. I was thinking that would be helpful around here because a lot of times I'm done with my chips, and you see the garbage can is way over there. Oh, I could have it oh. mounted right here for my chips and take the the chip bag, and it would just right back. That'd be nice. Or kind of. I could use that for my cookies too. Yeah, like. Like that Cookie Monster actor. What's his name? Uh, CJ Graham. Yeah, CJ Graham. I like cookies. Okay, now Make sure Jeff. I milk. Okay, so let me get back to this. Oh, okay. You talk, no, you want to talk about? No, it? go ahead. You want to talk about CJ? No, I, I do not want to talk about CJ. I, I want need, to talk about Creepshow. I, I need milk for my cookies. Okay. <laughs> but did you like in this movie oh, where I they still have made? Go ahead. I still. Well, I want to finish up about the cockroaches. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So the cockroaches. Whatever. So this guy, I didn't even get it. 
But he was in there, and he's like, I got all these cockroaches. I need someone to come up here and exterminate them. And then he ends up, like, I can't tell you how he ends up, but it, right. just, it was weird. It was just a weird. What, okay, then, it's then, based on something, though, that right. maybe you're not familiar with. It was real big in the early 80s. And I only knew about it because my mother actually read a book on the subject. All right. Um, Howard Hughes. Yep, I know who that is. In his late days, he was a neat freak. Okay. And he lived, I think it was in Vegas. He was up in the penthouse of okay. his hotel. And he would sit around in his underwear. And he had people that had to catch flies. For him, but he didn't want him killed because that would make a mess. He, they had to catch him live and and escort him out. He yes. was real big about Kleenex, and he he was a neat freak. And that's what they were kind of taking off for in E.G. Marshall's um, character that they had in there. So it's kind of based on that idea of somebody super rich that's a real neat freak. Well, it, it was screwed up. But anyways, so. <laughs> And then, and then after that one, <laughs> screwed up. After that one, we come so in. you don't have a problem with bugs. Would you have had a problem playing that role with all them no. bugs jittering around? No, because you saw it when it was laying there. It was like a, it was a dummy. It wasn't even him. They didn't have no bugs on him. The bugs were all he, like creeping around. He said "dummy" like he was begging me to get in there, but I'm not going to do it. Anyway, I'm not so taking that then, bait. Then we do the wraparound. We come back to the opening scene again, where yeah. in the opening scene, the dad is upset with the kid for reading the magazine creep show, and then yeah. the kid's like, "Hey, it's nothing more than your pornos in your in your dresser." I was surprised he said that. Yeah. And then it comes to the end, and then the dad's like, "Yeah, you know what? We toss that stuff away." Blah blah blah. And then the dad's having like muscle problems i'm not going to get into it too much right. but you'll see a picture of what's going on over here yeah which was kind of cool because t tom tom savini is out he's a garbage man all right and they actually open up the the creep show magazine like this they open it yeah. up and then the ad for a voodoo doll is gone and then they right. go to the kid that now, was really here's cool. what you that don't know cool. that was cool here's what you didn't notice earlier in in the movie oh, i got something as they're going through the comic book, yeah. going from one story to another, yeah. that ad is out. already cut out yep. earlier. Now okay. that, no, no, no. Now that you mentioned it, I do remember that. It, yeah. Because it was going through that. But yeah, I, that was I cool. loved how they represented comic books in here. There's a couple of times where they're changing scene, and it looks like you're going from one panel to the next yep. in the comic book, which I, I just absolutely I like loved. I thought it was a great effect. There's a couple, in, and you'll see it in, in our clips that we have up there, where they took the normal background that was behind them, you know, like a, a wall or whatever, and they changed the lighting so it looked very artistic, like with just a shock of purple behind them. Yeah. Or like, like what that. you're seeing yep. right now, where it had these round circles. I thought that was so clever because, I again, you could pick up any of these comic books I have over here, and you you would see that type of artwork all over it. So I got a I got a total Twilight Zone vibe out of this. I got that. I got a lot of twist endings. Yeah. Yep. I got that, and and especially especially with the lasso with the bugs, it seemed yeah. very Twilight Zoneish to me. Yep. And then I got a lot from T I used to watch Tales from the Crypt on HBO. Yes. Only a few of them. I didn't watch a whole lot because I'm not really into that stuff, but. There was a hot chick in it. I probably watch it because it's going to be good. Right. But I was getting a lot of that. From, look at that. They're sluffy. I didn't watch any of these panels yet. But no. um, it was well, they good. Scare you. So now if I were going to rate all these these clips. Yeah. Which which was your favorite story? And So my cetera. favorite story was the wraparound. Well, there's a particular now, reason it reminds you of a Christmas present you got. It does. The, the voodoo doll. <laughs> but uh, my Craig Council voodoo doll. But but I do the, I would say the wrap around right the wrap around was my favorite and then I would say then I would say the the Stephen King one and then I would say the Father's Day one and then I would, really and then yep and then I wow okay then, then I would say the Ted Danson one and then I would say I absolutely I wanted the show to end with the cocker I just wanted it to end I'm like how long yeah. is this this episode yeah. it was way too okay. long oh wait. No, I take that back. Where's the crate? Yep, let me let me rewrite that. So I would say the 
my favorite one was the crate one. Yeah. Then it was the wraparound. Then it was Stephen King. Then it was the Father's Day. Father's Day, Ted Danson, and then the cock- cockroach. They could have just dropped that one. That was a waste of time. That- I, I I think the cockroaches is exactly what they needed. I don't know that I would have put it at the end. I would have put the crate at the end. The crate was um, the, was the best. I one. I heard they did spend some time trying to figure out the right what? order. For them, but I think now, the cockroach would have put me to sleep in the beginning. Honest to God, that was very. It, 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 it does go it, watching it for the umpteenth time now. You've watched I, this more than it once. goes. It it goes a, a tad long. Now, one thing I want you to notice: um, the gentleman that plays the father in the wraparound. Yeah, I know him. Uh, where is his it name? It's, I it's one of the top remember. ones. Why am I not remembering his name up the a top bunch of, of my things. head? My my brain went completely blank on it. Yeah. But um, he will be coming up later on. Yeah, else? yeah, I should not allow you to run the IMDb over there. Uh, here, let me add it. Anyways, but so... I can't believe I'm. Well, he wasn't. Up he wasn't top cast enough on his name. He wasn't good enough. Oh, God. Bingo was it? No, Bingo O'Malley. He's very good. Was it Cletus? I, I like. Him. There's, there's your guy, Tom. Savi- there, Tom Atkins. Why did I not remember his name? Tom Atkins will show up again later this season in Night of the Creeps. I've seen him in a bunch of things. He. He, what you know him from is in Lethal Weapon. Yes, he yes! is he's the, the guy. Yes! He's he's like the yes! Vietnam veteran friend, and a, he a gets lover. he gets just blown the yes! f away by a from a helicopter. Yes. yes, but he's he's fantastic. He's a Pittsburgh guy. Is he really? Yeah, and I, in fact, our our friend Mister Exler has interviewed him. Uh, I think on more than one occasion. But, um, yeah, so he will be coming up later in Night of the Creeps. Oh, I have that movie, too? Yeah, that's coming. Okay. It's coming. You're going right. to love it. So here's the deal. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you my... Now, if there is a sports connection you missed. Well, if you tell me the actor, I can tell you the sports movie. Okay. <laughs> during, during the Stephen King well, section? Well, Stephen King is a big Boston Red Sox fan. No, no, no. During the Stephen King section... Oh, the they were watching the wrestling, yeah, and wrestling that's match. Vince McMahon's voice. Is you it hear really? he's announcing the WWF match. Really? Uh, with the Samoan, and I forget who the other guy is. It doesn't really matter, but it's Vince McMahon's voice. Okay. I uh, didn't know that. That's, that's kind of cool. And I think this was before Vince really took over everything okay. from his dad. I, I think that's the timeline. But they were just starting to do stuff at. Uh, at uh, Madison Square Garden, we are running long, but okay. that's, 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 that's okay. We get we get paid by the hour. Yeah. So, do you want yeah. Do you want my my rating on this? I think it's about time. Yeah. Do you think you know what it is? You are going to be a lot lower. See, I think this is like a eight or a nine on my <laughs> scale. So you're probably going to be down below five. I, uh, I'm thinking it's going to be like a four. Yeah, it is a four. Yeah. I'm I'm I am a little surprised and disappointed because I like this movie a lot. I think a lot of the reason I like it is because of its comic book well, you have a history connection. Stuff, yeah. But I also knew that you like Trick or Treat, and I thought, yeah. well, this this one's but, uh, similar. But I think this in structure. But like I said, the the cockroach almost put me to sleep. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, um, it, it, I think everybody's got one of those stories in this movie where they're just like. Eh, it's not as strong as the rest. No, and the janitor being a dum dum. <laughs> that sort of stuff I can't. And then wait, and then you why, and you then get fluffy? upset about the dumbest then, things. But then sometimes. why did that fluffy guy? Why did he? You stay? didn't like the scoring and the fish that ate Pittsburgh or whatever. I did was. like. No, I didn't. But why did he stay at the stairs? Why did he just take off then? I don't get it. Why did he just stay there? That's dumb. Because then it That's isn't dumb. scary. No, it's dumb. I actually enjoy the crate realistic. has some of the best scares in the whole movie. I did jump once. Great, yeah, I because that thing jumps out and he says booga booga. I think but I jumped once. Yeah. You know what time it is? 
Oh, trivia. Do you know what time it is? It's trivia time. Well, I'm still looking for the button. There we go. Yeah, Trogdor is giving me advice. He's going to help me. He's my phone a friend. Do you believe me? This is trivia you know, time. Yeah, I gotta find it, right? You know, we do trivia got here. It. All right, so are you gonna ask you, me first, or am I asking you? Well, you found it. Go ahead and you go first. You found it. You brought it. All right, so, uh, so it's wait, it's four statements. Three, three statements. Real. Three statements. No, it's three. two. It's always been three. Oh well, then I gotta figure. One this out. is false, and two are correct. Yikes! All right, I'll start then. No, 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 go. Oh. no. You can go. I can go. No, go ahead then. All right. So, all right. So, all right. So, Bill Murray, being from the Midwest, yeah. Evanston, Illinois, yeah. was no stranger to bowling. He actually rolled, rolled all three strikes in that 10th frame win. Hmm. Okay. Next one is the Farley Brothers liked cinematography so much in the 1986 movie Something Wild that they told their cinematographer to copy its style. Okay. And then finally, Woody Harrelson and his team actually won the Texas State Division II bowling title in his senior season. Woody Harrelson? Yeah. All right. Do you need me to repeat it? Uh, no. I, I got this one because Bill Murray, I know, is actually freakishly good at athletics. It wouldn't shock me at all that he got the three strikes in a row. On his own? Yeah, I okay. think he did it no himself. Cuts. No cuts in the film. I I think he did it. Okay. Um, I in fact I bet you he, he's a damn good bowler because I know he's a damn good golfer too. Four. Um, <laughs> three hundred. Um, yeah. I uh, the second one is. I I don't know what to make of the second one. The third one though. I think Woody Harrelson is actually a terrible bowler, so I don't believe that at all. Because when I was watching him, I'm like, he isn't even good at faking bowling here. Uh, it's a good thing he had lost his hand in the movie because oh my it God. just oh it, my God. he couldn't fake well, maybe that's bowling so well maybe. through the rest of it. Randy Quaid looked like he might be able to bowl. Woody Harrelson looked like uh, the penguin coming up there, kind of tottering. So I'm going to say C is the incorrect one. You're right. All right. Finally. Finally, I get one right because last season I was stinking up the joint. Yep. Okay. I have no idea how you're going to do on my trivia this okay. time. I have no idea. I have, I'm doing my best. Oh, where the frick is it? It was open. There it is. Okay. The part of the father that wanted his cake in <laughs> Father's Day was the final role for airport movie star George Kennedy shortly before he passed away. Okay. okay. Second one. Ed Harris, also in the Father's Day segment, previously worked with George Romero, the director, uh -huh. on a film named Night Riders about motorcyclists that jousted and proclaimed Harris to be kind of a King Arthur type. So it was a futuristic movie like Mad Max? I'm not giving you more information than that. Okay. Uh, and the third one, your friend, Tom Savini, he sometimes <laughs> goes by Ted, uh, <laughs> did makeup in this film oh, yeah. and he has directed a segment of the Creepshow TV series now on Shudder. Okay. This All right. Is, this is way. This is very easy. Okay. I'm gonna get my five points also. Okay. Could you just repeat the questions again? I thought it was easy. Well, it's easy if I hear the question All right. one more time. The part of the father that wanted his cake was the final role for airport movie star George Kennedy, shortly George. before he passed away. Yeah. Ed Harris previously worked with George Romero on a film named Night Riders, about motorcyclists that jousted and proclaimed Harris to be a King Arthur type. And uh, this is letter C, your friend Tom Savini, not yeah. Ted Savini, no, Tom no. Savini did makeup in this film and has directed a segment of the Creepshow TV series so me, now on Shudder. Let me ask you this. 
You know, so, the, our our chat room, by the way, is not guessing tonight. It's kind of strange. That second one. Yeah. Now, was that... The second one is Ed Harris. I know, but about Knight Rider. Is that with Kit and the no, watch guy? No, it's a different movie. Okay, so the... the, the, the it was incorrect... called Knight Riders. So that's K-N-I-G-H-T. Okay, so then the easy... This is easy. Then it, yeah. A is the incorrect one. A is the incorrect one. Yep. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> yeah, that's clearly the case. Why you did you have any questions about Night Riders? No, I, I, no I just no. I was just okay. playing. Okay. I, I knew the I knew the correct answer the first time you read through them, but I wanted you to read them again. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> now I did have a spare alternate piece of real trivia. Yeah. Uh, that. I, I was going to use, but I uh, Let's hear it. I liked these two better. Cockroaches gathered for this Ugh. production yeah. still plague the Pittsburgh area. <laughs> no. No, that's absolutely true. From this movie, that's why? Yeah. They, they went over really? to, I think it was Africa or Egypt, and collected these cockroaches. And the way they did is they kind of baited a trap, turned off the lights... All these cockroaches would jump into the bucket that he had the yeah. bait in it. Yeah. They turn on the lights, get them out, put another bucket out, turn off the lights, boom, it was filled. Seriously? I, just one after another, millions of them that they, they brought over. And some of them, you know, no matter how well you keep that area, uh, you know, cordoned off for the cockroaches, some are going to get out. And some of them are pretty aggressive. Really? I said my word again. Aggressive. Aggressive cockroach. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, they're kind of invasive species. So are they still plague the Pittsburgh area? Yeah. You they they have some have pretty that. bad cockroach problems in, uh, in certain parts of Pittsburgh uh, due to that. The, the reason I didn't use it is that came from a movie, uh, a documentary about Creepshow so? that's probably over a decade old, so, so? I don't really know. I would have hung with and it. It's still accurate. Oh, but, you know, so you don't okay. think they're there anymore? I think they probably If I would have said that, if I would have said that the, the crew for this movie found Bill Murray's clear bowling ball with the rose in it in Pittsburgh at a pro bowling shop, would you believe that? Uh... I'm not sure. Oh shit! Because that they did, okay. they did find it there. That was my that was my throwaway oh, question. We got to go to the yeah, score let's first. Go to the score. Let's go to the scoreboard. There we go. No. Now I no, figured it out in advance. No, no that's not no, right. No. No. Are you sure? No. Yes. I'm pretty yes, sure that's yes. what it was going to be. No, you just got lazy. All right. <laughs> well, I put in tens for trivia. You can't even get ten. Well, if you answer two questions right, you can. Okay, but we okay, whatever. So you gave a four, I gave a three. The only reason I gave that four where, is because Tom Savini was in it. Yeah. No, seriously, I went. I, I really went. I got bored with it. I I really thought you were gonna like it more. I I apologize. Why yeah. are you in both the top and the bottom? I have no idea. What is going on there? Yeah, I can do a thumbs up in both of them. Or I gave a two and thumbs. Up. There you go. It's okay, Kev. People, people like looking at me. They really don't. They do. Now you're. Now they're both. What? The yeah, hell? don't scare people away, please. What the heck? Eight to nine. I am so mad right now. I can't even tell you. <sighs> okay. Well. Anyways. Something I get to fix again. All right. So Jeff, I'm off to a little bit of a lead, but that is not comfortable at all. Nope. It's going to be a long season, but I know I have some fantastic horror movies. I know you have some terrible, terrible, terrible uh, sports movies coming up. So it's going to be really close because I keep getting the trivia wrong. So <laughs> it's going to be a fun season, season four. Uh, and we come back February 3rd. Here this is next week next week Thursday and I'm going to be assigned the movie Raging Bull yep 
Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, black and white. Yeah. And somehow Jeff has got them both again. That's awesome. What the hell is going on? This, this is so pissing Tim off. You have no I'm idea. so angry right now. I spent so much time getting this ready for this season. What do I? What movie do I have? You get the creature from the Black Lagoon. Is it in color? It's in black and white. Why is this in color then? Uh, that is the poster. Okay. The posters I've never were seen done. This. I, I'm, You've I'm, never seen Creature no. of Black Lagoon. I've seen I've seen a Swamp Thing. Okay. But I've never seen Creature of, so I'm looking forward to this. I really am looking forward to seeing a Creature of Black now, Lagoon since I've never I seen believe. it. Now, I believe. What is going on? I love this. Oh. That makes me so angry. I can't even tell you. Tim, this I, is awesome. I, I I can't fix it right now. It's everything people, has been messed up. The, you know what, people out there watching this, you are just you're in for a treat. You get me, you get double Jeff. I you know what? I'm gonna check. Watch this. I'm gonna put it on my thing. It's probably gonna be Jeff on Jeff. Unbelievable! <laughs> yes. Total Jeff mania here. Yes, all Jeff, all the all the time. You know, it's gonna take me hours to fix it. I I seconds. do not know. How that got messed up. It it got messed up one time before. It took me two hours. So next week we do have those oh, movies. Hopefully you'll, you'll tune in. You'll just see me, but that's okay. Um, no, it, it isn't okay. Scoot but, over. Yeah. Scoot over. Scoot over. <laughs> oh, I can just do this. Hey, everybody. Hey. Uh, but anyway. Is it in 3D? Um, Cause it because it, Okay. Now, I did give you. Scotch. You have a version on the drive that I gave you. Yeah. That is 3D if you have the red and green glasses. I'm not watching that shit. Oh my god, it's such a great. I don't it is probably glasses. the best like, 3D. What am I gonna do? I'll I'll give you a pair before you. No, leave. wait a second. So that's the only version that's on there. No, there's two versions. No, I'll watch the regular version. Okay, but it, it is one of the best of the 1950s 3D movies. The it's best 3D really movie 3D. I've seen is Jaws 3D. It's an awesome movie. You gotta see. It's better than the original. All right, we, we've got a lot to talk about coming up. Next week on the show, when you'll have two hosts again no, you uh, at that time. Doesn't make a difference. I, you know I'm what we could do? So you could mad. talk. Wait, talk. Just talk. Okay, I'm just talking right now, and Jeff is acting like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> we could do that. Or we it's a Godzilla off. movie. We could pull up, yeah. Uh, look out for Godzilla. Ah. <laughs> I, I cannot believe this thing did this to me again. I'm so mad. Anyway. Gremlins are getting you. I, I do not know what it's doing. All right. Anyway, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in this week. It's yes, time to you. close the crypt. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back to our season. Um, it's time for us to close the crypt. Call the game. Thank you all for watching. Remember to share and subscribe to our show and feed. You can find the show at otherworldlyculture.com and follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Pandora, iHeart, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and other five places you find podcasts. So remember, if it's sports, it's a home run. If it's horror, run. run home! We're dead on the bases. And we'll see you next time. Otherworldlyculture.com